Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI for the second time. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation with complex numbers or should I say imaginary numbers. Well I said for the second time because I just published a video an hour ago, hopefully you've seen it because that's a very very exponential equation. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and check it out. Anyways, I'll link it here. So we have sine z equals i, and we're going to be solving for z values. Now, can we find sine of any angle? Yes, we can. And that's always going to be between negative 1 and 1. So if z is real, its sine is bounded, right? But in the case of complex numbers, there are no limits. There are no boundaries. So sine z can be anything. It doesn't have to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. It can even be imaginary. Imagine sine of an angle is imaginary. All right, that's what we're going to do. And obviously by using the arc sine function, the inverse sine, we can go ahead and arc sine both sides and that should give us z equals arc sine of i, right? Nice and easy. Yeah. Well, that's such a cheap solution though. Let's go ahead and find something that has more meat. I mean, not like literally, but you know what I'm talking about. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and express sine using complex numbers or Euler's formula. Euler's formula tells us that, and this is beautiful, one of the beauties, there's a lot of beautiful pieces, but one of them is sine z can be written as e to the iz minus e to the negative iz divided by 2i. It's just amazing because this allows you to find the angle whose sine is anything, including i. And now in this case, we're going to set it equal to i, right? And then just solve for z. How do you solve for z? Let's go ahead and cross multiply first because that's going to give us i squared, which is what? Negative 1. Don't ever forget that, right? If you forget everything about complex numbers, one thing you should always remember, i squared equals negative 1 because it's going to solve a lot of problems. So let's go ahead and now cross multiply here and try to solve for z. This gives us e to the iz minus e to the negative iz equals 2 i squared, which is negative 2. Remember, i squared is negative 1. And this should become quadratic after a little bit of substitution. So I can write it as e to the iz minus 1 over e to the iz. You see the repetition. If you see something being repeated, use substitution. Because substitution is awesome. Call this t. And then you get t minus 1 over t equals negative 2. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply everything by t. t squared minus 1 equals negative 2t. 2t or not 2t if you're a tutor. Put everything on the same side. And don't get too excited. This is not a perfect square. But you can complete the square if you want. Put the one on the right hand side. Add one to both sides. So on and so forth. But I'm going to use the quadratic formula. You know, it's fun too. Uh, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 4 minus 4ac, which is 4 plus 4, 8. The square root of 8 is 2 root 2. And that is divided by 2. Everything can be divided by 2. That's cool. I can write t as negative 1 plus minus root 2. Hmm. Interesting. There are two t values. <laughs> two t. Two t or not two t. One of them is, I guess we could call that t sub 1, negative 1 plus root 2. The other one is going to be t sub 2, negative 1 minus root 2. And notice that this is very important. One of the t values is positive. The other one is negative. Hmm. And you should know that because look at the C over A from Vieta's formulas, it's negative, right? Vieta is also amazing, obviously, right? Anyway, so start with T sub 1. I guess I'm going to call this case 1. E to the IZ is equal to T, which is negative 1 plus root 2. Can I write it as to root 2 plus 1? It just bugs me. I, I need to write that first. And as I said earlier, this is positive. So now we can do this. E to the IZ, we can write as e to the power ln root 2 minus 1 because any number a is e to the power ln that number. Is that true for negative numbers? That's a good question. Obviously negatives will make a difference, a huge difference or a pi difference. Anyways, not the apple pie. So here's one thing I can do though to include all solutions because we have infinitely many values for the different uh, branches. I'm going to multiply the right hand side by 1, but the complexified one, which is e to the power 
2 pi n i. Isn't that amazing? You can express 1 using an exponential. And it's not only e to the power 0. Great. So this is 1 in the complex world. In the real world, it's n equals 0. And now we can go ahead and do the natural log thing. And if you do, you're going to get i z equals ln root 2 minus 1 plus, because when you uh, multiply, you add the exponents, 2 pi and i. This is the period, so we need to add it to include all branches and solutions. So we're going to be solving for z, so what should we do? Divide by i, right? No, that's not the right answer. The right answer is multiply by negative i, because it's cooler. I don't know. A lot of times people, including black pen, red pen, and I'm not saying that's anything negative, uh, multiplies, or I mean divides by i, but that's okay. I just do it a little differently, multiply by negative i. Negative i times i is negative i squared, and that's equal to 1. So we can basically cancel these out, and we end up with z. And here, when we distribute, uh, this is going to be negative i squared again, which is 1. So I can just write 2 pi n, but there's going to be a negative sign here, minus i times ln of root 2 minus 1. ln of root 2 minus 1 is real. Be careful about that because you have to make sure that's a positive value, right? Cool. So n is an integer. Did I say that? I probably forgot. But this is one of the z values. Great. Let's go ahead and keep that in a frame because we're going to refer to it later. And look at the second value, the second branch. Or I shouldn't say second branch because we're not talking about different branches. I should probably mention the other t value that is negative. And that's definitely going to give us something very different. So in the second case, we have e to the iz equal a negative number. In the real world, e to the power something cannot equal a negative number. But in the complex world, everything is possible, right? And notice that this is negative, but don't worry, we can fix it with a little touch. And here's how it goes. First of all, I want to express this guy as a complex number in polar form. So I'm going to absolute value it, which is going to give me root 2 plus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply it by e to the power i pi, which is actually negative 1 in the complex world, right? So by multiplying by negative 1, I'm getting the same thing. But you got to consider, again, all branches, multiple solutions, because it's multi-valued. And this time, I'm going to use a different integer, k. So I need to add multiples of 2 pi. And this is my setup. Let's go ahead and use the ln. Same thing. iz is equal to ln root 2 plus 1. And notice that this is the modulus. So I'm always thinking about a real valued logarithm. And this is going to be i times pi plus 2 pi k. And I can do a little bit of, um, you know, simplifying here. Of course, I have to multiply by negative i. And then after that, I'm going to be getting the z. And z is going to look like this. I just want to write this as 2k plus 1 multiplied by pi, which emphasizes that we're dealing with odd multiples of pi, so you're always hitting that negative 1 there. You see what I'm saying? Minus i times the ln of root 2 plus 1, and this would be the other solution, right? Now let's go ahead and take a look at some special cases, and that's going to be for n equals 0. We're going to get z equals negative i times ln root 2 minus 1, an imaginary number, right? And k equals 0 is going to give us z equals pi minus i times ln root 2 plus 1. This is a complex number in standard form a plus bi, which is the name of this channel. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.